Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. So I'm going to briefly present the, the uh, targeted analysis project that is still ongoing, and we are quite in the middle of, of the work now. So the project name is Potentials of Big Data for Integrated Territorial Policy Development in the European Growth Corridors. And, and as I said, um, we are in the middle of the project, we are working with uh, uh, Tartu University. So there's two, two universities, Turku and Tartu universities, and then we have three stakeholders. Uh, the least stakeholder is uh, the Regional Council of Southwest Finland, and there's one ministry from Estonia and one region from Sweden, so quite a Nordic or uh, Baltic approach in that, the project. Um, basically, um, in the background, there's really this, this really concrete and practical need to, to use new kind of evidence to support uh, territorial policy making. So basically, finding new kinds of data set support, support, to support policy making and to also to understand the, the uh, functionalities and the, the connectivities between actors and regions in the growth corridors. So, uh, and at the same time, there are increasingly these new uh, data analysis products and, and services available, but uh, there are quite many people in the, the uh, public sector organizations at different scales who basically they have uh, some kind of understanding that, that there is a lot of stuff uh, available and coming, but still not that much uh, knowledge and understanding yet what to actually do with those those new tools and, and data sets. So, so that's the, the really the practical issue there. So in the project, really we aim to to introduce this uh, comprehensive maybe framework is a better word to, for identifying uh, already uh, existing or new uh, big data data sources that might be relevant for policy making in the, the growth corridors. And really the main interest is on uh, those kind of data sets that could be somehow uh, used to, to better understand the functionality. So basically the interactions and the, the flows along the corridor. So what is, what is going on between the, the actors and the, the regions? And of course this is related to cross-border areas as well that have been discussed earlier. So really the, the aim is to, to strengthen the knowledge base for evidence-based planning. And, and the, the case studies that we are doing are mostly related to the area of Northern Growth Zone. That is basically an, a corridor, a strategic collaboration area uh, running from Oslo via Stockholm and via Turku and Helsinki all the way to St. Petersburg. So, and there's a collaboration with the Tartu, Tartu uh, the corridor running from other other directions. So, so that's our our um, framework, our geographical framework in the project. And uh, the second objective is to to find and evalu evaluate new available data sources. So, so uh, when I'm talking about growth corridors, basically I'm talking about this this. Uh, strategic collaboration areas that, that mostly follow the, the year 10 t network. Uh, and as I said earlier, the, our project now is focusing on the, the, the corridors uh, in the, the Sweden, Finland and Estonia. Um, the, the conceptual approach behind the project uh, relates to the, the, this conceptualization of, of corridors as meta-governance frameworks for for spatial development and also related to, to soft planning that Andreas was talking about yesterday. So, so um, uh, basically um, uh, the idea of, of corridors as a meta governance framework uh, 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 hold, uh, includes the idea that basically corridors bring together different sectors of, of policy making as well as different scales of policy making and, and then it uh, is also related to the different geographical conceptualizations of space that were, were also discussed yesterday. On the other hand, there are, are issues related to physical uh, space and the territorial and really this container like understandings of space. But on the other hand, 
we are talking about digital uh, connectivities and, and social in the interactions in the area. So, so uh, the, the idea here is uh, really that we need to, to take a comprehensive approach here to, to understand the potentials of different kinds of data to support the, the policy making. So uh, within these different categories, we have then selected case studies to, to explore the, the possibilities uh, related to different kinds of, of data sets. Um, traditionally, the focus uh, on corridor planning has been mostly on the, the physical connectivity of actors. So physical uh, transportation flows mostly uh, uh, related to, to the movement of people and the movement of goods. So, uh, but there are uh, increasingly these new data sets available that, that also describe the digital and social interactions and, so, and definitely we see that there's a potential there to, to generate new forms of, of insights to, to about special connectivities there. Uh, what we are doing uh, now is basically we are doing the case study, so, so we are quite in the middle. We, uh, first, we identified the policy, policy needs of the, the stakeholders um, that are mostly related to the, the three uh, different sectoral uh, areas, so, so transportation planning, uh, land use planning, uh, and spatial planning, and then economic development. So, so now uh, we are trying to um, uh, map and identify different data sources, uh, particularly in those three uh, sectors. And then um, uh, in addition to the case studies, what we are doing, we are trying to identify the, uh, also other kinds of data sources and some, somehow categorize those those uh, uh, data sets and uh, we have, as I said, we have case studies. We have three different case studies plus uh, a hackathon that is coming with the students from the Turku and Tartu universities in January where we are also working with students to, to explore the possibilities related to these new data sets. Uh, the first uh, case study is related to uh, traffic measurement data uh, that is opened by the um, Finnish Transportation Agency, uh, I think it was last year. So we are analyzing the potentials related to that data sets uh, and uh, it's mostly related to transportation planning but, but there is uh, also, a con there are connections to, to other, other areas as well. And in the Hackett, at the, at the Data is from Finland, but uh, in the hackathon we are also exploring the possibilities to combine the, uh, the Finnish data with the Swedish data uh, because the similar kind of data is also available from the Swedish to, uh, Sweden side. So, so that's still something that we are going to, to explore in January. Then there's a case study in Estonia where we are analyzing the, the potentials related to mobile positioning data. There's a, a team in Tartu University that have been doing research a long time already related to this, this kind of data. So, so that's uh, definitely going to be interesting and they are going to, uh, they, they are already working closely with the ministry there to, to um, uh, explore the possibilities to combine this kind of new, more real-time data to the transportation planning at the, the national scale. And then there's a, one more case that related to social network analysis. So we are looking at the, the potentials related to uh, project uh, network data. So basically we have uh, the network data from different EU projects in the, the area where we are looking at the connections between people in the, the EU funded project. So that's a totally different kind of case study and, and of course then we have to think about what kind of information could we and knowledge could we get from that kind of analysis to support the, the planning and development practices at the, the regional scale mostly. Um, so then we are going to, to present good practices and of course then policy lessons that is something we are still working, working with at the moment. Uh, but definitely to sum up, um, we see that um, 
that portraying these, these European growth corridors as frameworks for, for meta-governing spatial development really highlights the role of, of new kind of evidence to support that kind of, of planning processes and policy making. And, and definitely big data plays a central role in understanding these this new uh, uh, connectivities and complex spatial, spatial uh, uh, relations there. Uh, that really cannot be captured by using traditional statistical data. So um, we see that there are existing uh, gaps in the knowledge base that could be significantly complemented by utilizing these new, new data sources. And, and uh, it, uh, it really seems that now there is the arguments about the, the functional corridors they are too often based on these assumptions of, of connectivities and strategic objectives without really adequate uh, evidence base. Uh, so so that the presented framework uh, in the project uh, then can be utilized to shed light on the different dimensions of cor corridor development to, to enhance their, their comprehensive governance. And, and also, um, the different aspects uh, related to spatial aspects related to corridor development, they also imply really different strategies for data collection, and that is something we are trying to now, now somehow capture in the project. Thank you. <laughs>